name is Sanford Biggers, and I am a conceptual artist born in Los Angeles and working in New York City. You know, when I was in graduate school, I specifically went to the Art Institute of Chicago because they had a very interdisciplinary focus. And that was at a time when a lot of schools were still sort of, you know, a bit more traditional painting department was, you know, painting and sculpture was sculpture. There was probably some intermixing, but Chicago really promoted that as their ideal. And that was my ideal as well. So um, to be more specific towards your question, I don't really find a difference between fiber and metal and paint and wood and marble. Um, for me as an artist, it's really more predicated on the idea and what materials will give me that result. And I find quilts and fiber in general interesting because of the polemics that come up when you talk about fiber arts. In fact, when I was at school as a grad student, there was a fiber art department. And it was one of the more maligned um, departments because people were like, oh, that's fibers. It's just sewing and knitting. When in fact, it was everything but sewing and knitting. It was really experimental. And I thought they were making some of the best work in the entire program. So, um, you know, I, I like the fact that people sort of doubt or want to relegate fiber to do one specific thing um, and then be surprised that it could actually do so many other things. Twintriloquism is probably not the best example of some of that, but you'll see in some of my quilts where I use large washes of color, of paint, directly on the quilt, covering up the individual patches and patterns. But when you do that, you get rid of part of the graphic content, but then you start to really see the seams and how much intricacy is really happening with the stitching. And the stitching mm -hmm. is basically like drawing. So you see differences in line pitch and pattern and approach and cross hatching. And sometimes you wouldn't see that detail of the stitching when you're optically confronted with so many different other patterns and colors that are in the, you know, the, the cloth that the original makers used. So um, I find that in some way I'm erasing the pattern, but highlighting the stitching in examples like that. Um, with twintriloquism, you'll see how those two pieces are folded and draping on the ground. You start to wonder how it's all constructed and how it's able to fall that way. Um, and I think that goes back to one of your previous questions that fibers, in fact, are so strong and malleable that they can do a lot more things. We often take for granted that they're just a flat piece when actually they can do so much more. Right, like I noticed that in some of your other pieces too, just like doing research on you and um, like some of your artwork is very sculptural with uh, fabric. And I thought that was really interesting. Well, you know, I think that the quilts themselves lend themselves to not only sculpture, but even performance because the reality is they're made to house comfort and hold bodies. So even when there's no body in them, we do have a bodily, visceral reaction to them. So they're either remnants or evidence of bodies touching them, hands making them and so on. That's all sort of wrapped up inside of the quilt itself. So I think it's evident when people see them. 